What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Snacks in the Stacks. This month, we're going to be doing a beef stew via the new book, Simply Simon Suppers, which is available at CPO locations. Recipes and menus for every week of the year. Michael Simon is an accomplished chef, well-known worldwide, TV and or otherwise. There's our beef stew. We're going to be doing it a little bit differently than he suggests in his book, which everyone should do a little bit here and there to kind of make it their own thing. I'm going to be going kind of traditional with this, carrots, onions, celery, garlic, so forth, dried herbs, big old chuck roast, red potatoes, red wine, red pepper, beef, broth, onions. Did I say onions? I remember. Tomato paste, shallots too for a little extra sweetness and everything else you see here. We should always try and make this your own for yourself in the future. Okay, so we're going to be doing this a little differently, like I said, than he does. First, I'm actually going to marinate the beef for 24 hours. Olive oil, garlic powder, onion powder, pepper, and salt overnight. 24 hours makes a big flavor difference in your meat. I'm going to be rendering down some fat from the same beef, but that's going to brown the beef in a moment. This way you're using a lot of the same beef itself. You're not using any extra oils or anything. And trust me, the olive oil with the seasoned coating that's on the beef already will be sufficient once you start cooking it in more fat. Always try and use this stuff. This way you're saving some oil and some time maybe too. Brown it up, get it on the side, get it ready to take it out, and then let it rest before you put it into the beef stew as we get ready for our vegetable prep. Gather up those little beef bits and take them out. We're going to be using the juice also for the vegetables. Just going to use some dry rosemary, salt, and pepper this time. You can use other herbs, dried and or fresh. It's certainly up to you. I like the dried because it gets a little bit better into the vegetables, I think, as they cook down. A little more red wine is going to bring a little more sweetness. You just want the vegetables to sweat a little bit. Once your beef broth is ready to go, we're going to put in our vegetables, and then momentarily we're going to put in our beef next. You're going to want to put the lid back on this now for at least an hour to two hours. Once this all starts stewing together and they all just start taking in their own juices from each other and complimenting each other, this is what's going to make a really good stew, whether it's fall, summer, or whenever you really just want a good stew. We're going to add about one to two tablespoons of tomato paste or just two big old squirts. It's really up to you. But yes, I can feel her eyes on me. She's smelling this all day and she's wondering when on earth is dinner going to be ready. I like using big red potatoes halved. I don't like making little ones because all this stuff is already so small and fine anyway. I like to be able to mush it up with a big old potato as it falls apart with everything else in it. The little trick to this, though, is when the meat starts to float, is me it means when it's ready, pretty much. You take it out at that point, let it rest, and it'll fall apart in a bowl. I like to call it like the fat as a life preserver for the meat for itself because once it starts coming up that means it's aerated and the fat has loosened up the meat and it's not as dense which is why it's floating to the top nice fun little fact a little bit of extra acid also plus i do like fire roasted tomatoes i'm putting two cans in this also and to be clear this is a six quart slow cooker so there's actually a lot of stew here now that the meat has sat it's gonna fall apart, just watch. Now that's red in the center too, that means it's got a good flavor and it didn't overcook. If it ever turns gray or brown, that means it's well done and you should not be eating it, ha ha ha, for all you well done people. Now, notice the grease on the top. This is easily something you can take care of yourself. Just grab a paper towel, flat or fold it over, and dab the top with it as it soaks up all the oil or extra fat that you will not need in the stew to make it good to begin with. You just want the flavor, not all that fat. Corn starch for thickener. We're keeping this gluten-free, by the way, too. Some people do this varying ways, but I like using cornstarch because it gives it that nice thickness now, which all stews should have. And again, it's gluten-free. You can do this stuff non-gluten by adding beer and other things, but I like doing it this way so I can taste the beef. Now that the beef is ready, we are going to chop this up a little bit. Not a fine chop, kind of a rough chop. And I'm doing this one-handed, so you're going to have to give me a second here. We're going to put this back into the stew now, and we're all going to let this sit for about another hour on low temp. Who doesn't want some type of bread with their stew? We're doing some non bread today, though. Store bought, I did not make it myself. A little olive oil, put it on a cast iron grate if you got it. About maybe three to four minutes both sides, take it off, cut it up, and you're gonna be dipping this in your stew also now that we are done. Notice the thickness in there and how it's not too soupy but not too thick either. 
We are just about done now. Dip that bread and let it go. Hopefully you all were able to catch the sky out on Sunday. I'm really happy I let that meat sit overnight because now I get to eat my stew and look at this. Take care, everyone.